Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the medical black book. Our today's topic is Metabolic response to injury. In order to understand this, we need to understand the metabolic response to surgery and stress. This model, ebb and flow model, was presented by David Cuthbertson in 1930. This model tells us when an injury is caused, patient enters a state of ebb, ebb phase, which is also a state of shock in which the patient stays for about 24 to 48 hours. This period can be shortened upon resuscitation. After that, the patient enters into a state of flow phase in which the patient stays for days. This is also known as a catabolic stage. And then finally, the recovery. The end phase plays a physiological role to conserve the circulatory volume, energy stores. This phase, as I've already told you, it is for about 24 to 48 hours and can be reduced by resuscitation. For better understanding, we will see your video. Okay, before starting anything, we need to know about the state of shock. For this, I'll give you an example. This pink-haired boy is climbing down the stairs when suddenly, wham! And there's a lot of bleeding from the head, basically. In this state, the patient has basically entered the state of shock. The state of shock does not uh, clearly say that uh, if you start bleeding, you will enter the shock. It can be... Uh, the shock state can be initiated by many things and it can also be caused during surgery or any other form of stresses. In this state, what happens in the human body is that the heart pumps blood to itself, to the brain and to the adrenal glands. And the rest of the body, basically what happens, the vessels vasoconstrict because these are the essential organs which need the blood in, this, in that state. In the brain, because it need, uh, there, no, there is not supposed to be any hypoxic state because the patient could die because of this. Similar as the heart, whereas the adrenal has separate functions. Adrenal gland has three layers, stratum granulosum, stratum fasciculata, and stratum medicularis. Stratum granulosum secrete the hormone aldosterone. Now, what does aldosterone do? It activates the renin angiotensin pathway, which causes, which acts on the basically which is produced by the nephron and the nephron what happens there is that it begins to absorb sodium as the sodium is absorbed the water gets also absorbed along with it and hence the person does not pee similarly the water is being conserved and the cardiac output is also then the next hormone is secreted from the stratum fasciculata which is the cortisol the cortisol is a stress hormone it acts on the following organs, the liver, which secretes glucose. It also affects the bone in the form of, in the state of stress. It, cause, it results in decreased bone formation and on the muscles to decrease amino acid uptake. As the body dead tissue or, uh, the, uh, the, or the repairing tissue needs it. Then what we have next is that we have the pancreas. Pancreas, then the cortisol basically counteracts insulin and it results in an insulin resistance in the body due to which there is a lot of glucose which stays in the blood and does not enter the tissue. Then lastly we have is the adipose tissue. Adipose tissue as you know the currency of the body is fat. So the adipose tissue breaks down and provides energy. Then we have lastly we have the stratum medicularis. It secretes catecholamines that is adrenaline, no adrenaline, and it causes constriction of the blood vessels. Similarly, the most other organs other than these three do not get their proper blood supply till the patient in that state. This patient will be, con uh, will be in this state for about 24 to 48 hours, and this time can be shortened if the patient is resuscitated. Flow phase. In this phase, there is hypermetabolization of body energy for repair. In this phase, the body undergoes a process called catabolism, which is the breakdown of product into simpler byproduct for to be used and processed by various metabolic cycles. For this, a video is shown. Okay, discussing the flow phase. The flow phase is also known as catabolism, uh, which occurs for days, approximately three to 10 days. In this phase, it is metabolization of the body energy for repair. This repair is has approximately four elements. The number one element is the hypermetabolism, which occurs 
by secretion of cytokines from the body or the liver to be more specific it acts upon the hypothalamus and it which results in central thermal dysregulation which in, results in increase in sympathetic activity increase in sympathetic activity includes increase in the heart rate increase in the bronchial passages increase in the peristaltic activity pupil dilation and as well as sweating the next phase is about alteration in skeletal muscle protein so in this what happens is there uh, there is increased breakdown of the proteins and decreased synthesis this protein these amino acids go toward uh, go towards where the injury is present in order to repair that tissue during such phases there can also result in uh, uh, protein the protein breakdown due to which the skeletal muscle as the protein as the skeletal muscle protein breaks down it also results in a decrease in skeletal muscle mass then the next phase is basically alteration in hepatic protein metabolism in this phase what happens is that the albumin concentration decreases in the blood because the liver decrease uh, the, the synthesis of the now again we will discuss it in a tabulated form the ebb and flow model after the injury has been elected in the ebb phase which is a shock phase in which the patient stays for 24 to 48 hours it is characterized by hypovolemia because of the hemorrhage that has occurred and decrease in metabolic rate because the body in shock phase will supply only the essential organs decrease cardiac output hypothermia and lactic acidosis as skeletal muscles switch to anaerobic respiration during such times the hormones being secreted are catecholamines cortisol and aldosterone the magnitude of this neuroendocrine response depends upon the degree of blood loss and stimulation of somatic efferent nerves in the flow phase which is a catabolic phase in which the patient stays for days approximately 3 to 10 days in this phase as you've known it is hypermetabolization of energy for repair the basic pathology is that cytokines are secreted especially interleukin 1 interleukin 6 and tnf alpha which acts upon the skeletal muscles and adipose tissue in to secrete glucose or foam glucose in order to repair the body the elements of this phase are total four the first one is hypermetabolism in which cytokines affect the hypothalamus and cause central thermal dysregulation in which the sympathetic activity has been increased this activity can be counteracted by bed rest paralysis ventilation and external temperature regulation in the second point which is alteration in skeletal muscle protein there is muscle wasting due to increase in muscle protein degradation and decreased synthesis the major muscles affected are the skeletal muscles now what happens is there is a loss of skeletal muscle because of because of the prolonged amount of damage that is being caused towards the body this muscle catabolism cannot be fully inhibited by artificial nutrition support as long as the stress response continues hyperalignment represents a metabolic stress itself and that the nutritional support should be at modest level to attenuate rather than replace energy and protein losses the predominant mechanism in muscle wasting is atp dependent ubiquitin proteasome pathway point 3 alteration in hepatic protein metabolism in this acute response the liver produces decreased albumin but increased fibrinogen and c reactive proteins which are important for recovery and repair the last point is insulin resistance in post operative period what happens is cytokines act on the insulin regulated glucose transporter protein till the resistance there hyper there hence there is hyperglycemia in the body as this occupies the glucose receptors on which the insulin uh, in this basically occupies the insulin receptors which which activate in the cells to uptake glucose hence if they are inhibited the lots amount of glucose would stay in the blood treatment for such processes meanwhile patient should receive insulin infusion to a uh, to decrease the morbidity in the recovery phase there is anabolism which is forming more complex product in which the body stays for weeks then we have the avoidable factors the compounds that responds to injury in this the first one is volume loss volume loss occurs due to acute hemorrhage 
This is sensed by carotid artery receptors in the carotid arch as well as in the left atrium. These receptors, what they do is they send every nerve input which releases aldosterone and ADH. Aldosterone, as you know, this goes, this is activated in the kidney and this produced by the renin angiotensin pathway and this helps the sodium to be absorbed which causes accumulation of large amount of water in the body and hence it returns to normal to the normal blood volume adh has similar function this is secreted by the posterior pituitary this causes water retention when on this results there is oligouria and there can be visceral edema, which can cause delay in gastric emptying. In order to avoid such volume loss, we give patient Hartman solution, which is an electrolyte flea solution in order to avoid any net weight gain. Our second point is hypothermia. Hypothermia results in increase in steroid and catecholamines. In order to avoid it, we need to prevent this from occurring. Tissue edema is the accumulation of fluid in tissue spaces due to increased vascular permeability by the action of cytokines and endothelium. So we have to avoid inflammation. Systemic inflammation in tissue under perfusion. Endothelium, but as you know, in, during an inflammatory response, causes it is activated by cytokines. So in order to avoid it, we need we need to uh, cause normal glycemia and insulin infusion during such critical illness in order to inhibit nitric oxide synthase, which increases the permeability of the blood vessels. Then we have starvation. Starvation, to prevent it, we have to give two liters of IV saline, 5% dextrose to provide approximately 100 grams of glucose per day. And then lastly, we have immobility.